So at this point, I feel like everybody and their grandma has seen the classic Patrick Stefan empty net miss, where he goes on a breakaway, moments away from scoring the easiest goal in his career, and boom, he misses. Only for Edmonton to take the puck, where they would score and tie the game. However, what people don't talk about is the ripple effect, or perhaps butterfly effect, from the result of this misplay. But what do I mean by that? Well, at this point in the season, the Oilers and Blackhawks were at the bottom of the standings. So both are in the runnings for the Patrick Kane sweepstakes. And they would both finish with 71 points apiece. Do you see what I'm trying to get here? If Patrick Stefan doesn't miss that empty net, the Oilers would have finished 5th last in the NHL that season. Meaning, if Patrick Stefan scores, the Blackhawks finish 6th, therefore are forfeited from winning the first overall pick. So Edmonton would be a completely different team from today. They don't have McDavid, and the Blackhawks dynasty never happens. All based on Patrick Stefan. And which brings us to torts. As many hockey fans know, John Tortorella is notorious for outlandish quotes and his conservative approaches to the game of hockey. I'm not taking any questions. We sucked from head to toe. I need a damn occasional save. Please, get it out of my face. I don't mean to bust your thing, but my gosh. But does he overdo it sometimes? Because back in 2018, Torts was head coaching the Columbus Blue Jackets and coaching forward Anthony Duclair, who had been bouncing around from team to team trying to cement an indefinite role as a top six player in the NHL. And well, Torts had this to say about Anthony Duclair and his time in Columbus. I don't think he knows how to play. I don't. I, I, it seems to me he's like a player that just feels he can get the puck because he's tremendously skilled, can skate. He has all those things as you guys know. I just think he thinks he can go do whatever the hell he wants on the ice. He can't do it in the National Hockey League. I, I don't know if, if he just can't comprehend it or he's just stubborn. Torts was also quoted for saying that Anthony Duclair was running out of time, also off the rails. So ultimately, Columbus would trade Duclair on trade deadline to the Ottawa Senators. And unfortunately for Torts, his quotes would not age well. Because 10 months later, Torts and the Columbus Blue Jackets were set to go head to head against Anthony Duclair and the Ottawa Senators. Duclair in that game would end up scoring two goals in regulation and would cap off his hat trick with the overtime winner. Since Duclair was called out and traded, he has transformed into a near point per game player. Now, I'm sure deep down somewhere, John Tortorella applauded Anthony Duclair for his hat trick because I believe he helped Duclair get back on the rails by helping him find the motivation and consistency to become a bona fide top six player in the league. But at the same time, this exact, I guess, attitude towards his team has also led to a bunch of teams not wanting to play. So you're kind of walking a fine line of trying to motivate a guy without him hating your guts and wanting to leave your team. And you're totally right. Not everyone's going to respond the same way like Duclair did. But for certain players, they do need a little kick in the butt to get going. Yet, this doesn't come close to the instant karma we saw from Daniel Carcillo. Because after establishing himself as an NHL goon, Carcillo would develop a reputation as a dirty player. And for good reason. Whether it was slew footing, assaulting a ref, you name it. Because in an Oilers-Blackhawks matchup, midway through the second, Carcillo would initiate a standard dump and chase. However, at no point was Carcillo actually chasing the puck. From this angle, you can just see him staring at Tom Gilbert, waiting for him to be within proximity of the puck, where he would then cross-check him from behind at high speeds, resulting in Gilbert flying into the boards and landing on Daniel Carcillo's leg. Except on this play, and I kid you not, Daniel Carcillo not only would receive a seven-game suspension on this dirty play, no, Carcillo would also tear his own ACL, which would ultimately derail his entire career, leading to early retirement. All right, so for the last one, this might just be one of the strangest hockey plays I have ever seen. Period. And to be honest, I doubt this will ever happen again in the NHL. Bounces in front, Bobby Ryan gets a stick on it, has it slashed away, looks around, palm skyward. Back towards him. Yeah, that, that was strange. Ludman with a shot, rebound! So, Miko Koivu loses his stick in a battle with Bobby Ryan. He then steals Bobby Ryan's stick. And then of course, Ryan does what anyone would have done in that situation and retrieves Koivu's fallen stick from the ice. And the hockey gods would curse Koivu, leading to Bobby Ryan scoring with Koivu's stick. And you know what's even crazier about this? Is Bobby Ryan's right-handed. Miku Koivu's left-handed. And of course, Bobby Ryan would let Miku Koivu know after scoring the goal by showing his stick in his face. But a sequence like this, 
honestly comes around once in a lifetime. However, this past season, we would see a similar play go down, as Trevor Zegras would try to get away with stealing Yoel Kiviranta's stick mid-shift. The refs were quick to step in, however, and Zegras would be given a penalty for his actions. But the fact that this happened to two Anaheim Ducks, what are the chances of that? 